I've, I've heard about GRN for a long time. Uh, they worked in Mexico, I think it was one of their earlier positions, earlier assignments, and it was so congenial and compatible with the distribution of the scriptures. And since we were translators, we were very eager to get the, the distribution of scripture out. So we were um, working side by side with GRN people, and they became good friends. It wasn't we and they, it was us together uh, promoting the gospel message. My role has been in probably four or five different functions. My husband and I started out as translators, but then concurrently with that, we would train young people working at, uh, we went down and worked at Jungle Camp in Southern Mexico. And in addition to our field assignment in Oaxaca, we would spend summers at Seattle SIL training young people and screening young people. So this positioned us when we went back to the field in September to encourage new people because we saw what a shock it is to come from America to southern Mexico and work in the mountains with an Indian group. It's a, it's a big change. So that was good for us as a couple, but was also good for us as our, as our family. Dick and I have two sons. Uh, one of them was born in Mexico, and when we took to Mexico when he was three, three weeks old, so we lived together in a mountain village in Oaxaca. Um, and we liked those people a lot. And they were, they were good to us, but they were not very interested in the gospel. And so our time there was filled with prayer and service. Uh, Dick was very skillful at many things. And he helped teach people how to use electricity, how to keep the light plant running how to do medical work. His most notorious medical patient was when he sewed a wing back on a turkey. Uh, they frequently ask us to do all kinds of things. Another time, um, a woman came to the door asking if she, he would come to his, her house and uh, work on her husband. And he did. And he climbed up the hill and went around to um, where she was leading him and she went around behind the house and she went to a pig pen and a pig had been gored and then we learned and you learn language all kinds of painful ways then we learned that the the word for husband and pig were very close together since it was a tonal language it was a difference of a tone so it was really an, not an entertaining assignment, but a challenging assignment. Part of the problem was that we were in the mountains with no airstrip and no road and no connection, no radio of any sort. So we really were quite isolated because Global Recordings Network is very compatible with SIL. We both believe in the power of the scriptures. We both believe in the scriptures being in the national language. We both believe that this message of Christ, the message of the gospel, is best conveyed in the local language. And so it's impendent on us, important, that we learn the local language and that we work compatibly with GRN staff. That was no problem. We love GRN people. Uh, we worked easily and well with them. Um, and I, I am very impressed by GRN people. The person we worked with had had a lot of experience in Brazil. His name was Ted Jones. And he was very helpful in uh, helping us record, do recordings. We probably were not the best recorders they had, but it, you GRN people know how to make us look good mission is to come alongside and facilitate the translation of the scriptures in all the languages of the world. We believe, together they and SIL and Wycliffe, that the scriptures have the answer. We believe that the gospel, as contained and illustrated by God's word, is best lived out by people who are working with it. It was an easy 
an easy compatibility for us as SIL workers to work side by side with GRN. The scriptures say, how shall they hear unless they be told? And that's the heartbeat, I think, of um, Global Recordings Network. You are the mouthpiece of the gospel. You are not translators. You work side by side with translators. But you use the product to reach the people of the world. And that makes you a good partner. That makes you a good user of our work and makes us very happy too. I'm not aware that there is any situation around the world where SAL and GRN are not working well together. I, I think we have more work to do around the world, but that's just because the gospel is not around the world yet. Not everyone has been reached yet. Discipleship isn't a product of the scripture. Discipleship means growing and living out the truth and the tenets and the, and the lessons of God's word. So they're very compatible with each other. Um, I think that if we want to learn to be a disciple of Jesus, we need to spend time with him. And we do that by spending time in the scripture. Our, our church is working and we have been working lately with disciples. What does a disciple mean? And what does it mean in daily life? It means that we incorporate the teachings of God's word and then we live them out and then we communicate them and pass them on. It's a very uh, congenial thing to do. I was reading in 2 Corinthians 4 uh, yeah, this morning and last night as well. 2 Corinthians 4 starts out with the verse Dick and I accepted as our, our mandate for the gospel work in Kiotepec. It, we are his disciples. We are his and your servants, Christ's disciples and your servants, that the gospel may be distributed to all the nations. That's what we want to do. We are, we are purveyors of something that's very important to us, and it's important to the whole world. This is what the gospel says. This is what we want to do. This is our mandate that we, we share the gospel truth. People can get involved in a number of ways and do. I think most of us who um, fund our role by supporting churches and individuals, we cultivate that interest and that support by staying in touch. We go and visit them. We, we write monthly or more frequently to them. We invite them to be partners and sharers in the work. We can't do this alone. And it's important that we maintain strong ties. I'm concerned when we assume that people would love to support us without in, any information. That's why I really appreciate what Global Reporting Network is doing. We need people who will tell the, the, what's going on and be good mouthpieces for the rest of us. You can reach people in churches and schools that we won't reach. And so if we tell you our story and Global, Global Recordings Network passes that story on, it's to everybody's benefit. Prayer is a key, bears a key role I don't think we could do it. I don't think we would continue. I don't think we would overcome if it weren't for the prayers of God's people. Just this morning, a woman down in Atlanta asked about what my prayer needs might be. And I could tell her uh, that I am struggling with a, a, a damage to an eye and I need prayer for that. If we have partners like that, we are not carrying the load alone. But not only that, and not only is it a benefit to us, it's a benefit to them. They have a part in the gospel going around the world. It's, they may be living in Atlanta and not able to go anywhere, but they're still a partner in the work. And I think what you're doing with Global Recordings Network is a very important piece because you're the message, you're the conveyor of the message of what we're doing 
and you spread it. And I'm, I'm grateful for Gospel Recording Network. It takes money because we, we can't do this um, without support. We have to live, we have to travel, we have to maintain our vehicles, we have to have medical support. Our children need to be uh, educated. We need to have support. And the funny thing is, or the real thing, um, significant thing is, when people pray, they are very involved. They are much more involved than if they just heard about the, the work by, when they go to church. So when they pray, they're involved and they may write, most likely they will. And they will ask, how are the kids doing in school? How are you doing? How is your health holding up? It bonds the, the believer at home, in the home church, it binds him to the worker on the field. It broadens the responsibility, and it's a very encouraging thing. It just makes so much difference. If somebody says, I prayed for you this morning. I do what I do because God has greatly gifted me with almost 60 years of experience. That experience has uh, spanned five domains. We were translators, we were trainers of new people, we were therapists, we both have degrees in, in uh, advanced degrees in, in counseling. Uh, we were administrators and I was a board member for a long time. So my role in SAL and Wycliffe Bible Translators has been quite varied, but it's been very satisfying because I have never not been interested in what was going on, and I have always felt appreciated and needed. And I've also felt that this is what God wants me to do. I would like to see Global Recordings Network more broadly, more, more widely known, and more broadly uh, discussed and marketed. Uh, I think it's a very important part, and it makes me sad when I think we are overlooking the significance of Global Recordings Network. I think we need to work harder at a partnership. I'm not sure people know what Global Recording Network really does for them. I'm not sure we know how to work together, and I think we could do better. I see the function here in this facility, and I see SAL right across the, right across the parking lot. I'd like it if we did it better. But you know, we're working at that. Toshi off, almost always comes to our Friday morning SAL meetings. That's great, I love seeing him here. Skip and Jan also often come to the Friday morning meetings. So I see increasingly we are developing a partnership and I'd like that to increase. I think we could share strategies, we could share leadership, we could share uh, roles and responsibility. When I read this, the New Testament, nobody was working alone. The disciples went out two by two, they went out in groups. Paul had Titus and had uh, Mark, and then Timothy, Titus. People most of the time did not work alone. You learn a lot when you're, when you're working with someone else because people are different, but it's very useful and it helps to put the gospel into practice. Well, I was thinking last night about Gospel Recording Network because we, we need people. We don't have enough staff to run this office. So what kind of people are we looking for? I think we're looking for godly people. We are looking for competent people. We are looking for visionary people. And we're looking for compatible people who will work together. So. Uh, I would like us to see more people like that coming in. I don't care how old they are, but we need people who know how to work together and convey the vision and carry the responsibility. You've got a lot of people like that. We do. I'm very impressed by GRN staff, and I consider it a great privilege to be working with them. Horizon Media Studios, producers of the television series Answering the Call, is looking for Christ-centered, Bible-believing ministries to feature ministries like Gospel Rescue Missions, homeless shelters, 
children's homes, Bible colleges and universities, mission sending agencies, pregnancy centers, and more. These are the doers of the word that James talks about. The Great Commission is to share the gospel and make disciples. Jesus taught us to pray the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest, and the harvest is ripe. We want to raise awareness of ministries and also mobilize the body of Christ to get involved and answer the call. Tell us about your favorite ministry. Email us at info at atctv.org.